Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to jump back on the transmission install in the uh, Yamaha uh, 1972 250MX DT2. Uh, got a little weather going on today. I'm going to take you outside and let you see what's going on. And I've actually, uh, a couple days ago, talking to a man in Atlanta and he was telling me how it was 78 degrees. Not 78 degrees here. It's not too bad, but we're getting a, a, a good snow before we start raising in temperatures next week, so they say. Okay guys, March the 10th. It's supposed to be in the 50s all next week. Just had to give us, I don't know, it's probably going to, they're saying going to go until 5 in the morning, so I imagine we'll get close to 10 inches by the time it's over. Let's go in here and work on a Yamaha 250MX. Nice and warm in here. I'm kind of working on things up here now. Um, we're going to... Uh, Get ready to assemble the inside, to all the transmission parts. So first we've got to measure everything up and let me get you overhead and we'll do that. Okay, before we get going on this, uh, I think you'll probably remember, it's probably been eight months to a year ago, I did a review on the uh, Mellow Yellow uh, gas tank badges and I think they're a very good product uh, I showed them on one of my gas tanks uh, go back and take a, a look at those I know a lot of people are buying these and they're a very good product they fit very nice and they look really nice he I believe has uh, improved the chrome on them uh, he talks about a 24 hour or 12 hour, 12 hour chrome. So I'm not, I'm not sure what that means, but it's, it sounds like it is an improvement over the older ones. Uh, supposed to give better resistance to fuel and that sort of thing. Anyhow, he sent me uh, a set of these and told, told me to pass on to all my viewers uh, that uh, that's at Mellow Yellow Supply. It's mellowyellowsupply.co.uk. I'll leave a uh, a link in my description of this video. But he's saying if you use my name in the uh, uh, code block, he'll give you 25% off. So I think that's a smoking deal. So go look. Go look at Matt's uh, uh, badges. I think he's got some other stuff over there too. Take a look at what he's got and uh, pick you up some badges at 25% off. Okay. First thing we want to do here, we just, we just want to make sure we've got all the parts and the parts that we have are in good shape. And that's what I've been kind of doing here. And uh, I've got, like I said, I had two of these, and so far I'm having to steal from one to make the other one whole. Uh, this was uh, obviously the one I'm not using. It's uh, spun off the, the main gear there. And uh, this one here, was it was missing a thrust washer here. So I had to rob that one from there. But anyhow, if you, when you get stuff like this that you don't know about, you really need to tear it all down. I know it's, it's a kind of cumbersome and it's, uh, it's hard to sit here and count teeth and all that stuff, but you really need to do it. Uh, a lot of these transmissions, uh, and this is the case with, with the uh, DT2MX, uh, these are close ratio, and if if people have gotten 
these parts over the last 50, 60 years intermingled with enduro parts that could be wide ratio. So you've got to sit down and make sure that you've got compatibility between uh, the main shaft and your counter shaft. So we just need to go through, verify what we got, verify that what we have is good, and put it back together. And that's what we're doing now today. And this is kind of how I like to set everything up. This is the way it comes off the shaft. Then I go back and I look at the IPB and I look to make sure that those are installed correctly too. So I've kind of looked over this. I think everything's in pretty good shape. So let's get with uh, putting it back together. You just need a little oil with this and uh, we're just going to Start with our fourth gear install there, and uh, that's where I was missing the thrust washer. That goes down, and that would have made this very loose, and it was loose. And as I'm going along too, I also am selecting the better of uh, the snap rings and well, just the better, the better of everything. You hear it snap in there. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot tighter now. I'm just going to put a little oil in that too and let it soak in there. The oil makes it a little bit more difficult trying to install all this stuff, but it really needs to be there for everything to work. So, uh, Let's see here. This is a third. And then we've got a another snap ring. Feel it and hear it snap in. And then we've got this thrust washer here. It's going to slide up. It's got the uh, splines on it. And, uh, and we've got our fifth. And second. Just like that. And you see on this one, you've got the recess right here. And you've got a raised area here. The raised area needs to go into that I'll put a little more oil on that into that groove on the uh, on the fifth gear, and then we've got a thrust washer. Is that right? Let me look here real quick. I think that's right. Yes, that's exactly right. The washer goes on first, 
and then the snap ring. There. Okay. Okay, everything's assembled as it should, and then this thrust washer will go on this end. Just like that. That should be everything you need to put that shaft in. Make sure everything is functioning. We'll go on to the counter shaft. Okay. Give this all a, pretty much the once over and it looks okay. And uh, first thing we're going to do is install our uh, second gear on the nose of this thing. It installs from this side and then we have these uh, this clamshell and it's going to fit kind of like this. Put some grease in here so it kind of holds it together. And then you have a selective washer that goes here this is the one I've got uh, that came on it, and it's uh, point, yeah, point four really. Uh, not sure what all are uh, available in, but this one would be a 25 by 34, and then whatever thickness, and this one appears to be four. This is going to go over this, and it goes up against the clamshell. And that holds it together, keeps that clamshell from falling off now. Okay, once we've got that one installed from this side, then we can turn this around this way and start stacking our others on. And uh, <clears throat> first one we're going to bring on is our fifth. See, it's sliding into the the grooves here, the cogs and the chogs, so to speak. And uh, then we're going to grab our fifth. And same thing, your these uh, cogs against these cogs. Got to have some way to for it all to lock up. And then we've got a snap or a uh, thrust washer and a snap ring. I'm sure these things move, but I kind of like to get them split so that the uh, each end is captured behind one of the splines. All right. So then we've got uh, fourth, looks like, and that one's going to go. Your cogs are going to go toward the first gear. And 
And then we've got a, another selective washer. And this one should be 20 ID by 30 OD by 1.5 millimeter. And I'm not sure what the other selection is, but but there are different ones for different issues. Just make sure your snap rings snap in. And then we have another selective washer. And this is, uh, let's see. 25 OD by 18 ID and this particular one is 0.5 and that one's going to go right there and I think I'll put a little grease on that one to hold it on there Okay, so there's our two shafts built up, ready to go. Then we've got our selector drum. And before you put this together, uh, put you some good grease down here to keep that selector on there. You've got the pin there. The, uh, you've got kind of a recessed area here and flat on this side, the recessed goes towards the drum here because when you're poking this in that's going to want to fall off so put you some grease on it do yourself a favor and everything's looking all right there and our shifters I've already done this on some of these looks like that one's on pretty good these these you want to put grease on also and don't be stingy with it that keeps them on there keeps them from falling down and on this one here I've got one with the a solid pin in it and again a little grease help hold all that together and on the other one we've got another little roller out here get you grease on that and there again just to hold it all together okay you, you, you can tell that there's kind of a a different orientation here just the way the things are built the you've got a number one on this side this one this is going to go down and you see the uh, the you know this out here you've got more uh, more space it's more flat towards this end the two flat ends are going to go together like this and they're going to go like that so these will be in there around the drum something like this now the one thing that is important to note when you're putting all this together just like most of them they've got to be you've got to hold it kind of all together and it's got to be a neutral when it goes in the case as close to that as you can you got to try to keep it that way we'll be doing that later uh, usually it's not real a real graceful thing to watch so let's uh, get on with some more inspection here okay what we're doing here is uh, a measure in the case the depth of the case to where our bearings or shims or whatever uh, are going to ride and I do that with a, 
a depth gauge and a parallel. And I've already measured the parallel. If some of you that's been watching my channel for a while, you, you've seen me go through this with uh, other models. <clears throat> this one is, uh, uh, it's, I've measured it already. It's a half inch. Exactly. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to kind of go through this and show you where I'm measuring to and from. And then we'll go over, I've already done all this measurement. <clears throat> then we'll go over to uh, uh, my tablet and I'll show you what I came up with everywhere. Okay, so here we're measuring where I'm at right now. <clears throat> and I'm actually measuring to this area right here, not the bearing. This is your, uh, is where your uh, shaft with the spacer on it, or the shim, is going to ride. It's just, it rolls within this uh, bearing. And then, <clears throat> that's with the, with the main shaft. And then on the counter shaft, the same thing, we're going to measure to the top of this inner race and you want to make sure because most of these are semi loose they're not a real tight fit make sure your bearing is down all the way okay then <clears throat> let me get uh, the other one over here and the same same thing here everything's a little shorter though we're going to measure from here down to the inner bearing and from the inner bearing on here to the uh, parallel. So that's how we're measuring the cases. <clears throat> now again, I don't have any other way to measure these uh, clusters except with a caliper. I just, my uh, micrometers will not fit in there and give me an accurate reading but <clears throat> I'm going to measure uh, we've got right here at this boss and right here at this shim that's where we're going to measure it from and then again on here you've got a shim here and here so this is how you're going to measure Now I have to tell you that if, if no one's ever been into one of these before and they, you know, nobody's been messing with them, they're probably okay to go back together the way they came out. Uh, but this one had been, uh, both of these had been into and already, as I've shown you, there was missing a shim on one of these. I can't remember which one now. but. Whenever I find missing parts or parts that are installed wrong, that I just kind of have to start looking everywhere then. Uh, you know, just the old adage, put your best foot forward and no one will look. And that's, uh, that's really kind of true. But if you start finding a bunch of stuff that is not all that, that great, then you kind of start wandering and looking. So anyhow... <clears throat> On the counter shaft, uh, and I'm, this is the counter shaft, one the counter shaft sprocket, that's what I'm calling it anyway. And I got a measurement of, now I've, I've got to do all this in uh, inches and convert it to millimeters. It really doesn't, I don't need to convert any of this stuff to millimeters because it doesn't have to uh, be a specific size or anything at the end of the measurement at the end of the the day all you're trying to do is get your uh, your your free play as close as you can that's all you're doing okay so we take the counter shaft and the the total width and I've got 3.447 and then this is the mag side case. 
and the counter shaft is everything here is counter shaft everything over here is the main shaft so this is the measurement I get 2.472 and I subtract the half inch parallel get 1.972 and on the clutch side case I get 1.982 minus the half inch 1.482 so then I measure the two in the squares uh, add those together and this is what I come up with 3.454 and then if you subtract the shaft measurement from the case measurement you get seven thousandths clearance <clears throat> same thing over here we've got uh, I'll just disregard this it's uh, 3280 and 2.477 comes out to 1977 1838 comes out to 1338 and for a total of 3.315 and at the end of the day that is 35 thousandths clearance so the book tells me that I have uh, available uh, what was it uh, for that that shim okay for that shim you have a one or a point one a point two and a point three and it's a UR which means you uh, you can use them or you use as required or whatever let's see you are use size thickness and or number as required so you can use multiples of them you can use none of them or whatever you know so uh, so what I've done is let's see here I'm trying to figure out convert it here real quick okay so I'm essentially using seven point seven millimeters uh, I'm which is basically twenty seven thousandths and when I do that I come up to eight so I'm at seven thousandths on one shaft eight thousandths on the other shaft <clears throat> now all that's going to do is keep these gears from moving like this you want them to kind of stay put and when you put them in the case you want you want them to be pretty well centered now you can't really uh, I mean these things are going to slide of course but uh, you're just looking for these things now you know it's not going to tell you in the book any of this stuff not the book I got anyway it's just things you kind of learn and let me get the case over here and we'll pile those in there let me get you up here a little ways Okay, I've got my shim on this one and I've got my shim on this one here and we're gonna put those together and it is kind of a, a tap fit Now you can see the relationship we're basically flush across the face of the gears here 
Of course, one of these is hooking up, so that, that one there, so that keeps it, when it falls down, it wants to lock up. But this is all we're looking for at this point, is this relationship. <clears throat> and then, when we put the two case halves together, number one, we want to know whether or not these things are even going to fit inside the case. That's our number one objective. And there again, you by measuring the counter shaft or the, the shafts and then measuring your depths and adding them together, you can readily see that they will fit. But one of them has excessive clearance. So that's the one we're gonna we're gonna shim out. And I went over and I I cut a shim out on the lathe for my 27 thousandths. And that's where that one's gonna go. And that should give us eight on this one, and uh, no, seven on this one, eight on this one, thousandths. And nowhere does it say what that dimension is supposed to be. It just stands to reason that you want them pretty close to the same so they're not getting out of alignment and getting uh, interfering with another gear. Okay, I'm just going to get, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get my my pre-lube kind of done. This one here is going to get some uh, assembly lube and same on this one. I kind of got to get it on my finger and get it in there. And you really don't want anything on these because it'll create a, a vacuum or a suction and your pin won't go in, so don't worry about those. And try to get some of this up here where it's going to spin. And uh, I'll put some on the shafts too, but I've got to get all the shafts and get all the components together. And let me kind of show you how it's going to go. Gotta make sure you got everything on there. I'm going to pull, pull my homemade shim off for right now. Of course it probably isn't going to fall off. Well, we'll leave it then. <clears throat> okay, be sure you've got some grease on this piece so it doesn't fall off as it goes down into here. And Make sure your the uh, the most ex you know you want the the flattest area of these to the top. Uh, otherwise, you see this angle even more so on this one. Those need to go like that, and then this one here, kind of the same way. But if you have the one towards the bottom you should be right. Let me see if I can get this stuff together here. Okay, this is kind of what you want. You want your, this, the drum here with the neutral, which is right here, facing back here to where it's, where your pin's gonna, your detent is, as close as you can get it. it it'll go either, you know, if it's pretty close. And you want to try to keep all this assembled. And it, almost never happens. Well, see? I'm going to I'm going to work on this and I don't need you guys watching. Trying to get it down through the bearing and just trying to keep everything in line and in place.
Okay. I believe I got it. Let's saw it down. Okay, I can turn the main shaft and the counter shaft. I got my hand down here and it's not turning. You'll just have to take my word for it. And if you look down in there, right here is the detent and there's your neutral area on the detent. So you're in neutral, uh, you've got this pin in, and it's got the, uh, the little collar on it. It's this pin's in, and this pin's in, and it's got the little collar on it. And these are down. So everything should be in place. Wasn't as bad as, I, as it usually is, to be quite honest. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my deep detent in. Kind of help hold it together a little bit, keep it from moving. And I went ahead and lubed up all my bearings. I haven't done this one yet, but I'll get to it. And kind of my next goal here is to uh, get the uh, Yama lube on, I mean Yama bond on. And like I say, get that greased up and then we'll start bringing it down uh, this here is our shim on this side. We've got our shim here, and we don't need a shim on this one. Uh, some of them do have one here, but it's not required. This one gives me uh, seven thousandths the way we are. If I put the shim on there, I'm tight. So I'm going to leave it off and go with the seven thousandths instead of the tight. Okay, kind of my next thing here is just to uh, do a final clean on the cases. I'm using acetone. And make sure your, uh, your two dowel pins are in. I'm using the uh, three bond. It's just easier to get a hold of than the Yamabon. But I put it, I like to put it in a, a little syringe. And it doesn't take very much. It should be plenty. And that makes it a little easier. And of course it, it is very sparingly put on. Okay, we've got all the three bond on. I've already got these here. Everything but these. I just you don't need that that suction. Okay, everything that needs to be in there is in there. <coughs> got our dowel pins.
Okay, just keep tapping with a plastic hammer. And we're pretty much down. Yep, we're good. Okay, now we need to start finding some screws. We'll go in there. You can see the three bond coming out. We're still free. Crank's good. Okay, let me find some screws. Okay, we've got all our screws started. Yeah, now all the goo is gushing out. You always wonder if you got everything in there. But really there's not that much in there. All right. I'm going to whack all those a couple times and seat them good. Once you've got all those screws tightened up, then just go around here and take off the extra three bond. Okay, got that all done. We're still free. I turn this one over here and I'm still in neutral. So that's good. Everything's free. And the uh, crankshaft, same, same. So that pretty much takes care of our cases and uh, I think we'll stop here today and then we'll resume on this side uh, in a day or two. So there you have it guys, uh, we've got our cases put together. I'm hoping that uh, all our dimensions are good and uh, we shouldn't have any other problems going together. Uh, it's just, you know, you just pay attention to what you're doing. We all make mistakes, so I'll give you a disclaimer right now. If something doesn't work, it all happens, it happens to all of us. But I don't anticipate any problems. I think that everything is going to go together just fine here. 
So hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.